when you really want to optimize an end game. Don't you hate it when this happens, guys? What's up, everyone? Nathan coming back at you with another Monotype Showdown Live. We're going through them quickly here. Next up on the voting block was Monograss coming out of nowhere. Used to be like in last place for a little while. Came out of nowhere to just come and get first place this time today. So we're going to be playing Monograss as a result. As you can probably tell, I'm all dressed up in green as a result. I've even got some green sweatpants on. Not wearing shorts for the first time in a couple weeks. It's kind of a light gray, sort of greenish color, but... You know, I, I got the green knitted hat. My mother actually knitted this for me, so it's I think it's as good as it gets for me. I can't quite pull off the uh, overalls or what are some of the, the other grass gym leaders wear. I remember looking at the grass gym leaders, there's a lot of dresses there. I don't have, have any grass lily dresses, so this is kind of the best I can manage. Once again, as we get more and more along these typings, I can only dress so uh, effectively. But let's talk about mono grass for a second because I think it's a very interesting typing. Oh, that's way too zoomed in. That was from an earlier stream, I think. Uh, let's talk about Monograss for a second though, because it's probably one of my favorite typings. People always ask me, Nathan, what's your favorite Pokemon? What's your favorite typing? Favorite Pokemon is Dragonite. We talked about that for the Mono Dragon live. But Mono, but Grass is always my favorite because when I think about just stylistically about Pokemon in general, my favorite ones are the ones that seem like they're one with nature and they seem very connected. So if Vaporeon made a lot of sense to me because it seems like a fish, I can imagine it coming out of the water. That makes total sense to me. And Grass always feels like the most one with nature, like seeing a Venusaur in a jungle or like a Whimsicott in like a big you know, think of bushes, that makes total sense to me. So I've always loved the aesthetic of grass type Pokemon. I've always loved like, you know, totally different property here. Uh, but like if we're talking about Rivals of Ether and Sylvanos, I think that's such a cool character. It's like this wolf uh, made of grass that can go in and out of the ground. And I've always loved that sort of aesthetic. And as for, in terms of how it works in mono type, uh, it's interesting because on the one hand, you have a great matchup versus Mono Water and Mono Ground, which are huge uh, problem matchups in Mono Type. Very common, very, very good. Uh, so having that matchup advantage is always going to be a huge help. But in return, you are weak and really lose hard against Flying and Steel. In addition to Fire, which isn't so common. Bug, which is weirdly common, all things considered. But, you know, it kind of makes sense because people love to be Bug Type trainers. Who am I to talk? And actually Poison as well. Mono Poison stalls, of course, can be really, really tough too. So... It seems to struggle a little bit, but the biggest thing that we can point out about Mono Grass in terms of a typing is how well your defensive struggles are shored up by two great Pokemon. If you have, of course, a Ferrothorn, I don't think I have to sing the praises of Ferrothorn too much. One of the best defensive Pokemon ever since its introduction. It has Leech Seed, has a bevy of hazards, great defenses. Uh, in terms of move pool, you can run Power Whip, Iron Head, Gyro Ball, or Body Press now for excellent move coverage. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. I've run a Choice Banded set kind of effectively at some times. Very good. But most importantly, it's going to shore up some weaknesses to Bug, to Flying, to Ice, and to Poison. Great. We've already shored up so many weaknesses there. And in addition, if we have a Cradilly, which seems weird. I think I mentioned this in my uh, Monotype video where I introduced a tier in general. But Cradilly also shores up a huge amount of weaknesses. It's really good at covering a lot of bad matchups. Uh, and it offers a Stealth Rocker, and it's got great Spadef, so you can ha have uh, Ferrothorn for a sort of physical defense mon, and Cradilly for a special defense mon. That's really helpful. So in terms of defensive core, you have that. In addition, probably the most iconic Grass-type Pokemon to come out recently is going to be... Oh, and sorry, if we're talking about defensive core, we talked about Amoongus with a Mono Poison stall, but just a great do-it-all defensive mon. It's got Spore, the best ability in the game. Regenerator's fantastic. Uh, decent mixed defenses. This might seem kind of average, but when you combine that with its high HP stat, it's quite good. And yeah, Regenerator's Regenerator. It's fantastic it's unkillable uh plus foul play to help against any anti-sweeping pokemon really good stuff but um if talk about offensive grass type pokemon there's actually a decent bevy of those too so rillaboom is a very uh popular one kind of crushed uh overused once it got its amazing grassy search ability grassy search is awesome it's going to reduce the power of uh ground type attacks which means not only do you just beat ground type pokemon now because you have a type advantage we just curb stomp them now <laughs> uh it's a free swap and whenever you have like atlantis against you or something uh, grassy Glide is incredible. It gives you priority when Grassy Terrain's up. You have extra recovery. It means that you are living very long as a Grass-type Pokemon. So Rillaboom's a fantastic offensive Pokemon. It can run Choice Band. It can run Setup Sets very well. Uh, and then we also have Pokemon like Delmese, Pokemon like uh, Tapu Bulu. We have Pokemon like Venusaur. You can run Sun Teams where Whimsicott is using Sunny Day and use Venusaur's Chlorophyll sweeping ability. So Rood is very, very good in this tier because it has excellent coverage. It has good healing with its jungle healing ability. It's a good general pivot with its Dark Atlarius and U-turn. And it's got a good, I think I mentioned the move pool, but... Again, the move pool is very handy. Uh, Tangrowth rarely gets used in these sorts of teams, but again, Regenerator, fantastic defenses, all things considered. It doesn't bring a lot to the table that, you know, Amoongus and Ferrothorn and Bradilly don't already, but quite good. 
So all this combines, we have good offensive Pokemon, we have good defensive Pokemon to create a bit of a good balance core. And balance is something that you don't often see in mono type because sometimes you have great defensive cores like you see in uh, mono poison or mono water stall. And sometimes you have great uh, offensive cores, actually a ton do. There's almost no typing that out there that doesn't have good offensive Pokemon. But to have both in conjunction and to be able to shore up all of your weaknesses with just a couple of Pokemon with just a small defensive core, which again, we can mostly do between Ferrothorn and Gridilly, that's really uncommon. So I find that quite interesting. Uh, I, I'll be honest though, as much as I like grass, I'm kind of, you know, waxing poetic about how much I like the typing in general. This is a typing I really struggle with because balance is something I've never been fantastic with. I was terrible at, with it at the start of Sword and Shield, kind of began to learn it before DLC 1 came out. And so I kind of figured out balance, but it definitely, this is something you have to work hard at to be good at mono grass. And I do like to be good at it. Um, and sorry, and, and sort of rounding out the kind of big Pokemon in Mono Grass, we're also going to mention Wimscott. Wimscott's one of the few defoggers. It's got Prankster, so it can defog with priority, which is fantastic. The Prankster ability means it can do lots of other things, like it can use Encore. So if something like, you know, maybe Hydreigon comes in on your Ferrothorn, you're forced to swap out with Ferrothorn. It substitutes. Hydreigon's got uh, Flamethrower. You go, oh my god, I'm about to get swept 5-0. What am I going to do? You know, it's got Substitute. I can't really break that with my Credilly, who's my go-to special wall. What can I do? Well, you've got Encore with this uh, Whimsicott. Really, really good. It's a U-Turner. Again, we see Sunny Day here. Uh, it can get you all kinds of momentum. Leech Seed. It's a fast Moon Blaster, which is really helpful. 116 base speed is actually quite nice. There's not a lot of fast uh, grass Pokemon out there. So that's another thing. In, in, in uh, Balance, it's so much about consolidating cores into key things, right? I can only have my entire offensive core handled by these two or three Pokemon, my defensive core by these two or three Pokemon. All my utility has to be handled this way or this way. It's very difficult. Um, and sorry, the final thing I want to bring up before we move on, because I'm talking a lot about grass uh, balance in general right now. Uh, on the follow-up lives from team building and stuff, I'll probably talk more about the interesting offensive stuff that grass can do, because that's better than you might expect, considering how many uh, defensive resists it has here. But... Um, on the final topic of grass balance, and I think this is really interesting, is the idea of hazards. Because we have talked before about how good hazards are in monotype, there's lots. We've talked before about how limited, surprisingly so, hazard removal is with uh, sticky webs in particular, but it was also a big part of what got us uh, a lot of wins in uh, mono poison was there's few removal for toxic spikes, things like that. But I would like to talk about how few uh, typings out there have good access to spikes. So we're going to have Credilly as our stealth rocker because Credilly doesn't have a great move pool if it's considered. You're probably running Leech Seed, Recover, Rock Blast, and then as a result, you're probably running Stealth Rock. You could use Protect there, but if I'm going to have Protect, I'd probably do that over like... I don't know, maybe maybe over Stealth Rock then. Fair enough. Anyways, Credilly's probably running Stealth Rock, and if Ferrothorn's freed up to not run Stealth Rocks, that means it can run Spikes instead. And Spikes is fantastic. It's going to do a huge number on any team trying to run a consistent long-term game against us. If we're up against a Mono Poison, for example, and they don't have their Defogger with uh, Weezing gone for whatever reason, that stall would completely fall apart. The Spikes would completely annihilate them. So it's a huge, huge thing to consider. It's going to be a big advantage. But the point of my topic is there's actually not a lot of Pokemon or type things in monotype that can run spikes very effectively. So let's just go through like this list of spikes right now. It won't take that long, I promise. So Excelgore notably gets spikes, but we talked about in our bug type uh, live how few bug type Pokemon, like you're, you need Scizor, you need Volcarona, you probably need Buzzful. I think you need at least one of Araquanid or Galvantula. I also like to really have something like Credilly for a Rapid Spinner. So what does Excelgore bring to the table besides spikes in all those situations, right? It's got okay special attack, but uh, its main offensive stab is Bug Buzz, which is not very effective at all. So. If you are adding a Excelgore on a Monobug team, you're giving up something valuable. So I'm not seeing that on a lot of those teams. Colossal, great example. It's actually a big part of Mono Rock. Mono Rock is, controls hazards really well. Diggersby, if you're running Diggersby on Mono Normal, Mono Ground, that means you're giving up either Body Slam, Quick Attack, Earthquake, Swords Dance, or U-Turn, or Fire Punch. That, those are all, it's already got uh, four move slot syndrome. Adding spikes in on top of that is really rough. Uh, again, you can do so in any of these cases. Not to say like you can't, but it's difficult. Frost last, it's mean you're using two uh, hyper offense leads in addition to Nine Tails, because Nine Tails is pretty essential to Mono Ice leads. On Mono Ghost, uh, that means you're giving up a really valuable offensive Pokemon, like probably a Gengar or uh, uh, even Spectreer. You're not giving up Dragapult on a Mono Ghost team, so you can't really fit Frost last under those teams either. So many roles can down to being consolidated, right? That like a lot of teams don't have that uh, that availability. 
Steel and Fairy, they both definitely run spikes very effectively. I love Klefki for that exact reason. Uh, Mew, I don't see on a lot of mono psychic teams. If you're doing an HO team, yeah, the Stallbreaker set would be very good. If you're doing an HO team, you could do like a Sash, Stealth Rock, and Spikes, and Explosion, and Flamethrower, maybe Taunt, maybe Defog. Now you're up to six moves that you want there too. Kind of difficult. Uh, so Mew, I guess kind of, but I don't consider Spikes a very prevalent part of how mono psychic works at all either. Again, here's two other bug Pokemon that can use spikes, but for the same reason we broke down earlier, Heracross is not giving up a valuable move slot to use spikes. That means you're giving up like knockoff or swords dance or some sort of coverage move. Uh, Glyspot's not fitting onto my team, if I'm being honest. So we keep going down here. Grass, we're going to be using that with Ferrothorn. Scallopede wants offensive moves. Uh, mono flying could. I actually don't see spikes on mono flying very much, but it's more normally because if you're running mono flying and a steel type Pokemon, you're almost certainly running Celesteela or Corviknight. Using a Skarmory instead just doesn't strike me. You'd be doing that specifically for the spikes, to be honest. So that's not very good either. And that's really it. So it comes down to uh, maybe someone's going to correct me and point out something I missed. But for the most part, if you're looking at your average mono type teams, almost nobody's going to be using uh, spikes besides mono rock. Mono Fairy, Mono Steel, and Mono Grass. That's only four of the possible 18. And I think Mono Grass does it really consistently because Fair Throw is such an excellent pivot. So all of that is to say that you're playing Mono Balance. You're kind of leading yourself towards more low, not, not a slower game plan, but a little bit more passive because you do have a defensive core to long, last these longer battles. And the biggest advantage you can have with that is you are controlling hazards very effectively because not only do we have uh, an excellent defensive core with these four, honestly. whimsicott has got terrible defenses, but that typing can help it out, and the threat of an Encore or uh, Moonblast can be helpful. Uh, plus, we have good recovery and Grassy Surge, yada yada. So the, this does all matter, um, but when you add in the fact that you also have good hazard control with a priority defog and with uh, Stealth Rock and Spikes getting frequent sw uh, switching opportunities, it's actually quite powerful. So that's what I think is going to be the key defining point of uh, Mono Grass playstyle is just controlling hazards, uh, playing safely with your defensive pivots, you know, not putting them in positions where you're in too much trouble. I will say that, uh, again, having bad matchup against Mono Steel, Mono Flying, and Mono Poison is really difficult to overcome. And sure, being good against Mono Grass and Water does kind of make up for it a little bit, but that's tricky. Cell of the Steel in particular, this team, I don't even know what you do if you come across Celesteela. I came against, um, well, we saw in a, in a previous live, I was getting absolutely farmed by, uh, what's their name? They're literally top on the ladder right now. Uh, oh, they didn't quite make it, but Big Papa Oof. Uh, very smart player, very great mono flying player. Uh, but their Celesteela, I don't know how you beat that with a grass team, right? Uh, Cradilly is the only one that can handle Flamethrower more than any turns, and it gets smoked by two heavy slams. <laughs> so, again, there's, there's, there's definitely gonna be some cruel matchups here, similar to our Mono Electric lives. Mono Dark, I think we're well situated for, looking like a very uh, hyper offense flavor of Mono Dark. Uh, so, key matchups are definitely gonna be Whimsicott. Whimsicott's uh, Moonblast is gonna be really difficult for them to swap into. Outspeeds all of them, excepting the Scarfer. Um, let's lead our Rillaboom, predicting the Crocodile, but we don't get there. That's fine. Um, I don't want... Do I care about Thunder Wave so much? I'm kind of outsped to begin with anyways, and this Rillaboom's not looking so, so good. I might just take a Wood Hammer, take like 50% here, or 71. Rillaboom. I'm expecting Taunt here, so going to Ferrothorn right now, for example, and going for Spikes doesn't seem very likely to me. So I think I'll just take the kill here. Um, that will invite in, although that invites the question, who are they going to afterwards? Probably Moltres Galar with Air Slash, which we have a resistance to. Or I could also go to Wimscott there. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to kill this Mon. They're going to go to Moltres Galar. They're going to go do, go for either Nasty Plot or uh, Agility. And when that happens, I'm going to go to my Wimscott and Encore. And then I can swap to my Cordillia and drop a Toxic. That seems fine. I'm okay, I'm okay with going for this kill knowing I've got a good sort of game plan going forwards. That's the thing, when people get swept by setup sweepers, I think they often go like, what could I have done there? They just set what set up on me and I lost. But if you give a free setup opportunity, like I am right here, I, I gave them the golden uh, swap in for their Moltres. They could attack me right away, but they don't. Yeah, so I get the priority. Uh, <gasps> no. You can't use Prankster on, uh, on dark types. Hmm. Congratulations, you played yourself. I had a game plan, my game plan was just flawed. Shit, 
Okay, so yeah, for those that don't know, so Prankster would normally give my Encore priority, so they'd be forced to just agility a million times in a row, but uh, that is not gonna work, of course, because they're dark types and dark types are immune to Prankster, and I'm so dumb. Well, if they attack me straight up, I probably go to Cordelia and go for a Toxic. If they go for a Nasty Plot first, they go for a Moonblast, but I think I'm gonna go to the Cordelia here. It's not so important. Okay, I got that right. And oh God, thanks to Grassy Train, we get it all back. That's gonna be a Toxic from me. Oh, this one doesn't have a Leech Seed. I normally build this Cordelia with Leech Seed instead, but I like this. I really like this Toxic instead. I, if, if this was my team build, I would have done otherwise, but that's that's very nice. Are they gonna go for an Air Slash and fish for flinches? I would not blame them if so. Just the idea of just recover spamming seems so dangerous. They've got a, like a 20 or 30% flinch chance between that and Fiery Wrath. Seems so wildly dangerous. Um, What else is Creedily doing for me, I guess we gotta ask. Uh, it's helping versus Hydreigon for sure. It's useless for Hy versus Urshifu, but super helping versus Hydreigon. Not so good versus Crocodile. We got all kinds of stuff to beat Crocodile. Um, Urshifu in general is really scary. I'm gonna have to keep Whimscott healthy just for that singular reason. t is kind of scary too, but I can beat that with all kinds of mons. So I, yikes. I'm really scared by this guy. Uh, I could go to Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn would take a couple with its base defenses. I'm going to lose the Hydreigon if I let this guy set up on me. Although, Hydreigon's kind of looking like a Scarfer, actually. That makes it significantly less scary. I'll go to Ferrothorn once, because Ferrothorn's actually not that important now that I look at it. They Nasty Plot again. Interesting. I'll take one. And again, I don't think this guy's doing so much, to be honest. Um, it'd be nice versus Titar for sure with that body press, but if I can get off a lead sheet, we are helped out a great deal. Um... Yeah, not like I have any other swap ins. Do we get the flinch? We do not. If I protect, that'd be lovely. But we do not. They're gonna fiery wrath here because they're not gonna risk an air slash uh, miss. So that's a good Zarud swap in. <laughs> not so good though. Do they die here? It'll be close. Close, but no cigar. Uh, probably fiery wrath because I can get the kill anyway. Do I need this Zarud though? It's a dark type resist. If it's a choice locked Shurshifu, I'll want the dark resist, but I don't know if a choice banded uh, Wicked Blow is 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 gonna kill this or not. Probably will. Um, yeah, I think it's time for you to go, my friend. Let's play for uh, a miss though with a bulk up with the jungle healing. Okay, so Moltres gone. That was a huge threat. Glad it's dead. Um, in terms of who we're going to see next, either Crocodile, Hydreigon, or Urshifu, I would predict personally. So what's something that matches up for all three well? Of course, Whimsicott does. Um, but so does Rillaboom, in a sense. In a loose, very loose sense. Because if we get Urshifu, go for a Grassy Glide. I can swap into Whimsicott afterwards. If we get Hydreigon, I can go to Cordilli pretty freely, knowing that with the extra grassy grassy surge recovery, it's handling anything Hydreigon's got quite nicely. Um, and if we see Ur Crocodile, then I just kill it. So I think this is a good play here. Do you see Hydreigon? So yeah, Cordilli will be able to handle anything this guy's got fine. If they nasty plot, if they substitute, it's kind of it's kind of dicey. But I'm kind of predicting their Scarf, if I'm being honest, because I don't love Scarf or Shifu on these teams. So I'll drop a Toxic here. Um, at this point, we're up Mons, and I just want to get consistent chip on these dudes. And again, we got Grassy Surge for a little bit of recovery, a little bit of leeway. I can go to Whimsicott here. I'll Moonblast on the Crocodile. Now, you could also be the Scarfer, actually, my friend Crocodile. You could be. And eh, really boom sucks here, because the Grassy Train's going to end. But we're taking so little, we're fine. Um... I'm worried about a swap to Hydreigon on Grassy Glide, but Cordilli's so healthy. Yeah, okay. But superpower there, we got a little bit dicey. So maybe that's Shifu? Shifu, I'd be tempted to give up Rillaboom for. Toxic, which isn't, this isn't probably the Pokemon I care about being toxic the least. If it was Titar Hydreigon, that'd help a little bit. Um, Titar, we're unlikely gonna see. They probably know enough to know that we're banded though. So I'm guessing Hydreigon, but if I'm also them, I'm thinking like Hydreigon has the easiest swap in a Cordelia. I would love for them to go to Hydreigon right now. They go to Urshifu, like I don't swap into that nearly so cleanly. They're now two at KO in my Whimsicott. 
I should be calculating whether that was banded or not Whimsicott, because Whimsicott's so frail, I have a hard time judging whether that was Scarf damage or banded. They do go to Hydreigon, and again, I think this is pretty safe. Flash Cannon might do a little bit. Oh, that's quite, that's quite uh, easy to handle. Really want to double switch on Whimsicott, on, on, on Urshifu with Whimsicott. It's a game losing play if I get it wrong, but it's a sick play if I get it right. It's a it's a nasty play if I get it right, isn't it? It's it's, it's too filthy. Oh, so they were Scarf. They were running Ice Punch. Everything sucks. <laughs> Switch for a Spore here. We haven't gotten a Spore up yet. Uh. And there were Lumberry. I skipped that turn, which I shouldn't do. It's a terrible habit. I'm going to sport. Mm, they could go back to Urshifu right now. But with sand and stuff up, I think that's fine. Nice. And I can Giga Drain. Hmm. It's, things are really scary right now. I'll go to Rillaboom, because again, if they go to Hydreigon, I once again have a really easy swap with Microdilly. They might double switch this time. Oh, they might double switch. I'm not sure about that. But they didn't. Thank goodness. Um, now, we're going to see your Shifu again, which I really cannot beat. I could Rock Blast just to chip the guy. I go to Amoongus, because I think Amoongus can take one if they're Scarfed. That's probably my play. Let's see if they swap. We got him again. That's great. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb or a Giga Drain. Let's Giga Drain. Get it all back. Yeah, get it all back, Amoongus. Have yourself a day, Amoongus. Now I can Sludge Bomb, we'll probably see a T-Tar swap in, but they actually sacked their Shifu, which is my by far scariest Mon. As big ol' Hydreigon comes back in, I gotta imagine they're going for a Flash Cannon read at some point in this game. Um, Rillaboom guarantees a win versus T-Tar. Cordilli guarantees a win versus Hydreigon, so I'm now very comfortable going for a Sludge Bomb on it. They were Nasty Bot the whole time. Psycho, Poison? No. I'm tempted to just go to Ferrothorn, and then I can go to Cordilli safely from there and keep Amoongus as a bit of a buffer. Very tempted to do that. I think I shall. Although I might die to Flashkin at this point. It's a Dark Pulse. They don't have it. Um, this isn't good. This isn't good. Yeah, it's not good. It's really not good. Sludge Bomb, please! Crit. No poison, but now we're in range to uh, kill with Grassy Glide. They say GG. I think we have the GG. I think we barely pulled it out with that. Nice. Oh, that got so scary. Should be a two at KO if not an Oko. Great. Oh, that was so scary. GG to our opponent. Nice little W for us for Mono Grass. I got time for one more. Mono Balance is a little bit long, but. I don't, I, want to, I don't want to have a one game live. That's a little bit too little even for me. So we'll get one more. Um, didn't really get to flex the hazard so much, if I'm being honest, because we're just spending so much time working around their defensive core. Mono electric, I think this is definitely an advantage for us. We resist all other electric attacks. Uh, this team in particular, though, uh, you know what? When I was playing mono electric recently, I didn't mind mono grass just because Zapdos was such a absolute monster. I mean, Hurricane we're not swapping into, uh, Fire Blast we're not swapping into. So if we were talking about a, let's go back to my team. So if we were talking about this team, I think we'd be in good shape. This team does not have a lot to beat Monograss realistically. It's still got a Heat Wave on Zapdos, but it's so uninvested in its attack, it's not doing too much. But when we're talking about any choice spec Zapdos, which I do think is nearly essential, um, it's, it's, we're gonna have a hard time. Cordilli's not really swapping in. So in fact, I'm tempted to leak Cordilli in case I can get a Toxic turn one against that sucker. I would love that. Oh, how I would love that. Even Amoongus, I could go for a Spore, but I think we just get O-Code by Hurricane there. Um, if I go to a Whimsicott, I could go for a knockoff on it and then remove the specs, and then I can possibly beat them with Cordilli, which would be pretty fantastic. But they can both switch out on me after a whiff. I think if I'm fishing for Zapdos turn one, which I absolutely am, it's gotta be Cradilly. Not to mention, if they go to uh, Tapu Koko, which is another common lead, I have a free Stealth Rocks. They should be leading this thing, because they should just be looking for every opportunity to get a setup chance and attack on me. Uh, Zer Aura, we're gonna beat with Amoongus. Uh, Rotom's not gonna threaten anyone, but we have an Amoongus or Ferrothorn or Cradilly. Dragozolt's got Fire Blast. It's kind of scary. We could. Uh, we'll, hmm. 
I guess Ferrothorn, if they reveal Fire Blast, I can do... Yeah, that, that guy's scary. I'll give them credit. That, that one's a scary one. I'd probably go to Whimsicott, because if they substitute, I can then Encore them, and then Moon Blast them back out subsequently. And Magnezone with Body Press. I guess I'm beating with Amoongus, of all things. Interesting. Amoongus is... Always, it doesn't seem that good, but always puts in some work. Spore is just, it's that bitch. Let's let's call it what it is. Zapdos does come in, as I expect. Um, we're going to take a ton here. They, I think they'll be attacking. But I think I have to trade a Toxic here. I think I gotta. I could also Rock Blast. What kind of damage are we dealing with Rock Blast? I should I should know that before I make this call. Uh, Giga Drain. I I would never run a, that on this Gridilly. Because you, you need it for... Uh, Volcarona. 56. Oh my god. That's with just a 3 hit. If I get a 5 hit. I get a Rock Blast. But it's not as good if they swap out. Mm. They might swap out. They're taking they're taking their time with this turn too. They, they're really thinking about it. They're, they might be calculating it too. Can I kill with a Hurricane? Hurricane's doing 65 to 77. Oh my god. If they miss and we get the Toxic, we're huge because we can just recover on them. I'd probably go to Ferrothorn, but Ferrothorn is not got Spadef. But they go to Zone, which is the perfect, perfect play against us. Um, body Press is a risk. I'm going to go to Amoongus. Uh, these guys are often leftovers. Amoongus doesn't quite handle it like I expected it to, if I'm being honest. Let's, uh... I really want to Sludge Bomb on a possible Tapu Coco swap. Oh! Wow, I've not seen that set before. That's very bad for us. Zero Aura is scary now. I've still got lots of tools for, for Zero Aura, but... Yield Beam. I thought, you know, Flash Cannon's the max amount of damage I'm going to take there, but Steel Beam coming out of nowhere to do a number on us. Um, let's go to... And normally, if not for Zapdos, again, I, I could I could go for like some sort of high horsepower with Rillaboom because Rotom Watch doesn't want to be swapping in on Rillaboom. But the way it is right now, yikes. So you're not choice locked. You have high defense, so I can't kill with Darkest Lair yet. Go to Ferrothorn. Yeah, maybe I should go to Ferrothorn in the first place if I'm being... Completely honest. I was just afraid of body press, but I don't think they have body press if they have this. That would mean they only have one electric attack. Uh, I'll leech seed on a likely swap to Zapdos yet again. Um, with leech seed, we can probably handle Zapdos a little bit fine. That's the thing. Always having leech seed up is so good. There's so much survivability in grass teams besides actual recovery. Because I think balance teams are often characterized by having really good recovery akin to stall. But um, if we look at our team, we don't have really any recovery to do at all. We just have recover on Cordillion. That's it. Ferrothorn is not actually that good installed because it doesn't have the same recovery that a Toxapex does, that you know a Roost user does. It doesn't even have a Regenerator. So, like, yes, our Amoongus does have Regenerator, so that's some recovery there. But a lot of our team's recovery does boil down to Leech Seeding opponents, keeping up consistent leftovers in Grassy Terrain Chip. Not chip, you know, reverse chip in a sense. Uh, you know, Horn Leech if you have a Tapu Bulu, stuff like that. Oh, that's not Specs. That's not Specs. Okay, that's very interesting. Well, that's going to be rocks for me. They Toxic us. That sucks. They're probably Volt Switching this turn. Are they going to Magnazone? Doesn't matter. I can't, I can't, I can't double swap this turn and Volt Switch. That's the case. Oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. Even if they're not Specs, that's absolutely wonderful news. Um, They should be Volt Switching this turn. I'm going to Rock Blast. What the hell? It's going to do nothing to Magnezone, but, you know, Stealth Rocks plus a couple Ruck Blast chips. It's down, down to 40%. Maybe 45, depending on what rolls we get. And if they stay in, they're taking big Rock Blast damage. Even, you know, to get greedy and go to Tapu Koko, they're taking 20, 30% from Rocks and everything. So, it's it's stacking up. I don't think we're out of it on this one, but that, that Amoongus play was really devastating. They do stay in. Their most valuable Mon. Let's see if we get some good Rock Blast RNG. That's three hits. I'm already pleased. Yeah, I'm pleased. Uh, we're taking 18% next turn. I think they're going to be inclined to roost here. And if that's because I'm going to be inclined to Rock Blast again. That's the Screedilly's main job right now. It's going to be very helpful versus Rotom uh, Wash too. But as we get another three hit, have yourself a day, Cridilly. I'm taking 31% here. I can recover. Hmm, I'll do it. Yeah, we come up with a net gain in health with leftovers and all that. Um, Sleech Seed. Oh, no. Toxic goes last. Kind of annoying. 31% next time. Let's rip uh, Rillaboom. If they heat wave here, they're psycho. <laughs> they go for a roost there. They don't have Hurricane. They do a Volt Switch. They are dying next turn to anything here. Don't think they go to Rotom Wash in this situation. So I'm going to go for a high horsepower. 
if they stay in, good on them. Okay, good on them. Hope that Heat Wave was worth your most important Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, I really disagree. Uh, they could do it again, so I'll go to Cordelia here. With Grassy Terrain and all that stuff, we're fun. I hope those were your most important Pokemon. <laughs> but we'll see. It, it, it might pan out. It might pan out. Maybe the 50% of Rillaboom is 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 uh, going to be the game changer. I just kind of fundamentally disagree with that idea. A Volt Switch, perhaps? Yeah, we're handling that fine. Grassy Terrain again. It's just such a big thing in keeping our, our health nice and high. There's the big bad... Dragus ult I was worried about. Fire Blast concerns me for sure, but Cordilli can't really swap in either. So, I think I can take one Fire Blast. I think I might just body press here. Yeah, they get the... Okay, it's actually more invested than I expected. I was supposed to cap out at 60. Probably should have Leech Seeded. Yeah, that was a mistake on my end. Cordilli's low. Definite Leech Seed opportunity there. Let's go to our Sarood. Yeah, maybe 50%. Fine. Um, I can play for a Fire Blast Mist, honestly. There, there might be wide lens, but this is to a KO. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I think I'm not favored at this point, but we'll, we'll keep playing it out. We'll keep playing it out. They go to Coco. That's going to resist it quite well. Good play on their part because there's no way I was going for a Power Whip there. I don't have Power Whip, but they don't know that. Uh, so this thing's probably. Sp they took pointed stones damage. They're definitely specs. At least I think of Volt Switch in all honesty, but they could Dazzling Gleam knowing that my Ferrothorn's low. Does Ferrothorn get 2 it KO'd by Dazzling Gleam? I don't know. This health is not doing anything besides answering Coco, though. They do Volt Switch and it co AOs. Dang. If Magnezone got low, I'd be looking quite poised with my Rillaboom, though. Magnezone just got a little bit lower. There's their Aura. Uh, I think this is in range for us to kill with Grassy Glide. And Grassy, like, Magnezone will take it, but with Rocks and a 2 at KO, it, it might do it. I, I'm, my opportunity is just trying to get as much of these Rillaboom swap as I can at this point. As long as Zapdos is out, which it is, of course. Yeah, there's Magnezone. Let's see how much we get here. Let's see how much we get. If it was 20%, I would be thrilled. 30%. 30% Rillaboom. Okay, so... It's dicey. I said we need to balance our defensive core. We need to balance our offensive core. This is not balanced. I don't think this is a very great situation. But we're going to keep playing it out here. Uh, as they go to Drake's ult. Zarud will take one. I'm still praying for a miss at this point. But I I'm, I'm thinking they're not going to. We, we got to assume they're not going to. As they bolt beak. Doesn't do enough. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I Jungle healing, honestly. I could. But I'll Darkest Lariat here. On the Coco, chip adding up, really adding up. They're not gonna be able to control the train for very long at all. There's 28% there. Um, uh, this guy can still answer all kinds of Pokemon. With Grassy Terrain up, I can still swap into a Drake Result Fire Blast, which is really nice. Um, but Whimsicott, I'll do Whimsicott. Whimsicott will take one. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for a really boom swap at this point. Oh, but we are faster. That must be modest. Oh my god. That's huge. Oh, that's great news. Um, let's go to Crudilly here. I don't want to risk a uh, Will-O-Wisp. They go for that. Toxic works on everyone. I want to recover. But Toxic works on literally everyone. Um, great. Great, 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 great. Uh, now I can... Whimsicott's pretty good right now, actually. Weirdly enough. I think I'd probably rather give up this Crudilly than my Whimsicott. Uh, so let's do this. Let's recover in case they whiff the play here. Man, I think we I think we kind of dug our way out of that hole. Let's go. <laughs> Three grassy glides. Dracozolt is still the threat, but we outspeed Dracozolt with Sarud, uh, with Whimsicott. Um, they don't have swap-ins for grassy glide. There goes Rotom Wash. There we go. Uh, I'll probably be sacking Zarud. Then I go to Whimsicott and I Darkest Lariat. And then I... I think I'm fine. I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to think of this endgame. Trying to think of it. And how much do I think from Fire Blast right now, actually? Is it... Am I, am I guaranteed to die? They had 40 special attack EVs. And they got a top roll. They wouldn't kill us. If I hit this, I'm pretty much guaranteed to win. 
two at KO. If I survive this, I win. Got a top roll, man. What's that thing's investment? I think I lose. Dang it. Oh, I think I lose. Oh, it's Scarf, but they missed there. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll be able to do anything here for the win. Let's, uh... Dang it. Oh, that's so frustrating. GG to our opponent, though. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm actually so demoralized by that play. Oh my gosh. That that, that one actually really hits me hard. Let's... Let's talk about the end game. I, I don't I don't want to just dismiss that and be like, ah, oh, because I'm going to get roasted in the comments regardless. So let me just roast myself first. But assuming they weren't Scarf, which I, I let's just say that I was talking about that play there. The correct thing to do is I switch to, let's say Zerud, because I don't think he could Oko Drake's ult here, but Whimsicott could. So I go to Zerud, Zerud dies to the Fire Blast. It might not even die, depending on rolls and misses and stuff like that. If it missed, then I'd be at, 56 no i'd be at like 60 percent i go for two uh darkest slayer and probably go for a win there so that was definitely the play going to Zerud right there but if they had died if Zerud had died it got hit by fire blast they die i go to wim scott afterwards i go for a moon blast now we of course know after the fact that this was a a fire blast a scarf drake result but again assuming this kind of game plan in my head was the case they go that and then they switch to zero aura zero aura takes a moon blast and then Zero Aura would return fire with a, uh, doesn't matter, anything, any attack on my Wimscott would kill, maybe faster too. So then I go to my Rillaboom and a Grassy Glide once for the kill, then they go to Drake Assault anyways and they finish me off. So yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I had to do there. Well, how much could I go into Rillaboom that turn? On So I go to Wimscott, I threaten out, Zero Aura takes one. Could I in turn go to Rillaboom at that theoretical point there? Okay, so as you can tell, I was really irritated by the end game. And more than anything else than how I played it, the fact that it was Scarf, in my head, I don't really care about so much because I think Scarf is really, really not good in that sort of team. So I wasn't going to plan for that regardless. But I do think I played that wrong, even though, like, if I was playing for it not being Scarf, I think I played that very wrong. So I actually just charted out a flow chart right here to visualize this because these kinds of end games can be really tricky. So. Here is the optimal play I should have made, in my opinion. So I'm going to do this so you guys don't roast me like you guys so love to do. <laughs> if I do a single misplay, I'm about to hear about it three times. So the Drake Assault swaps in on the Rillaboom. So we're talking about this play right here. It swaps in right here, right? We're all on board with that. So what I'm supposed to do is I go to Zerud that turn. Because if they Fire Blast and they miss, then I can then uh, Zerud Darkest Lair at them because then we're assuming them faster because we're assuming they're not Scarf because why would we ever assume that a Drake Assault is Scarfed and that sort of team? Makes no sense in my opinion. But uh, I Darkest Lair yet, then everyone's in Grassy Glide range for the win. I'm good. Uh, my arrow key isn't working, so I'm going to just do it this way. <laughs> Fire Blast misses, we do this. That happens. When the Fire Blast hits here, then I uh, swap into Wimscott after the Zerud dies. And even then, they have to get a top roll. So if the if it was a bottom roll or a miss, and this plan works, and I win right here. But let's say they swap into Wimscott and they Moon Blast. Uh, then I, so let's say they Fire Blast hit. I can then swap into Wimscott. Then I can Moon Blast. If the Drake Assault stays in the Moon Blast and they're outsped, then I can Grassy Glide to beat Zero Aura afterwards. It's a one game. Uh, but if they swap to Zero Aura on the Moon Blast, which they could, because it's only taking fifty percent ish health right here, and this with low health. Then this is where I was getting confused. I was trying to chart this out in my head earlier. This is where I was I was losing track of things. But then what I would do is I go back to Rillaboom again because Zero Aura couldn't uh, Oko our Rillaboom that range. Uh, it could swap in super safely and go for a Grassy Glide there. Because then if the Zero Aura stays in on that Grassy Glide, they die. And then I can just Whimsicott for the win game uh, versus Drake Assault because the, I would then Grassy Glide the Drake Assault for like 50%. Drake Assault kills us. And then Whimsicott wins the game. But if they swapped in to Drake Assault there, uh, into the Grassy Glide, that's two at KO range, I do two Grassy Glides for the win, and then one final one to beat Zero Aura, and that would have been a one game no matter what. So, again, the fact that their Scarf was weird, I, I'm i not going to worry about that endgame too much at all, but I was really mad at myself that I played that wrong, when this is the endgame I should have gone for. So, if for no one else's benefit except for myself, that was what we were supposed to do there. Solution found. Uh, that's going to do it for the end of the live, though, with that frustrating loss at the end. But hopefully I can learn from that a little bit for the next live. I'll be using some grass offense next time because it's a little bit better than you'd expect. Obviously, it kind of extolled the virtues of balance for a lot. 
but um, I think it's actually quite potent to do offense too. There's a couple things we can do, including Sun Teams, uh, and I have this one idea that's probably not very like tournament viable, but I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. But regardless, thanks guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Make sure to let me know what you want to see in the comments below for the next typing. And besides that, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.